So the last one we're going to do is a photophosphorylation, which is the uh, creation of ATP via a gradient that was formed uh, from the energy using light. And let's see if I can do both on the same page. Okay, so let's start with cyclic photophosphorylation. And cyclic photophosphorylation, we have our chlorophyll molecule, which I'll just abbreviate CH. And that's chlorophyll. And let's make a light comes along and hits chlorophyll and it takes electrons that are initially low energy and bumps it up so let's go with electron at low energy and it'll bump it up to the electron at high energy and we'll give it like these things sparkly lines right so we got our high energy electron now this previously low energy electron has energy to do work and it shuttles it off to our good friend Oops, I'm not going to leave myself a lot of space, but the electron transport chain. <clears throat> and just like the electron transport chain in uh, uh, aerobic respiration, the whole current point is to make your chemiosmotic gradient, right? Or a proton gradient, high concentration of protons on the outside. ATP is generated by the ATP synthase. And again, this is going to go fast because we, we know this by now, we've seen the animations before. Alright, so protons come in. And the electrons, they ultimately need to uh, be dumped off somewhere. So the final electron acceptance cyclic is chlorophyll, right? It's a cycle, so the electron source is chlorophyll. Light energizes the electrons, makes it now from a, a, normally a low energy or waste product, to a high energy electron. Now this electron can do work, goes through the electron transport chain, creates a chemiosmotic gradient, and at the end of the electron transport chain, the electron returns to chlorophyll, completing the cycle. Non-cyclic photophosphorylation is slightly different. Starts again with chlorophyll, and we again have our low energy electron and an electron with no energy in it. Light comes along and energizes energizes the electron in chlorophyll and becomes a high energy electron. Right, so now we got this electron again, high energy. Chlorophyll has this ability where it can take the uh, power of sunlight and transfer to uh, electrons. Just like aerobic respiration, I guess just like anaerobic respiration, just like cyclic photophosphorylation, this powered electron is now going to be passed on to the electron transport chain, chemiosmotic gradient. All right, so again, this is going to be super fast, and we're going to make ATP. Okay, so ATP is uh, created by our chemiosmotic gradient. Right? So yeah, look, that's super fast because we know this now. Alright. Um, again, our flow of electrons uh, has to go somewhere. Right? So at the end of the electron chain, it has to go somewhere. And in non-cyclic uh, photophosphorylation, our flow of electrons ends up on NADP+, and this becomes NADPH. We don't talk much about it, but it's an electron carrier used for anabolism. And mentioned how it's uh, used in the Calvin Benson cycle to fix carbon. And so now it's non cyclic, it started at chlorophyll, ends up on NADPH. Uh, because this electron needs to be replenished, uh, plants and non cyclic photosynthesizers, or photophosphorylators, get their electrons from water. So water is the electron source, NADP plus is the electron acceptor, final electron acceptor. And when water gets oxidized, or when water loses its electron, it becomes oxygen. So now we have three products. Our main product is ATP, because we need the energy. Uh, we make NADPH, and both ATP and NADPH is going to be used to make uh, or fix carbon, carbon dioxide into carbon. And and uh, oh, Thanks, guys. and um, we make oxygen. And oxygen is a waste product, but you know, good for us because algae and plants that do this 
produce oxygen that allows uh, allow us to uh, breathe properly. Right? So now you can see the two processes side by side. Very similar, they both have chlorophyll molecules. Light is used to energize electrons from low energy to high energy. And then uh, they pass on their high energy electrons to the electron transport chain, create a chemiosmotic gradient, use that chemiosmotic gradient to make ATP. The difference is that the cyclic photophosphorylators uh, return the uh, electrons to chlorophyll, whereas the non cyclic drop off the final electron acceptor at NADP plus to make NADPH. Because it's non cyclic, they need some sort of electron source, and they use the cheapest electron source in the world, water, which is plentiful and has zero energy. And when water gets oxidized or loses its electrons, it uh, produces oxygen. Also, notice how it's very similar to aerobic and anaerobic respiration in the use of the electron transport chain. Right? So, if I were to just cut the picture off right here, you would know whether I'm talking about photophosphorylation or uh, respiration because the electron transport chain is exactly the same. It uses electrons to pump photons out, create chemiosmotic gradients. And then that gradient is used to make ATP. So that is our four process, four metabolic pathways uh, in a nutshell. Again, look at big picture and by drawing pictures like this, uh, it helps, allows you to compare between the different pathways and see uh, kind of the big picture process. And always think about this. What happens at each step? What is the main purpose of glycolysis? Or what is what occurs in glycolysis? Spinning food. What occurs at Krebs cycle? Oxidation. What are the main products that come out? NADH, ATP, etc., etc. Proton motor force, or sorry, chemiosmotic gradient. What happens at each step? What is the main purpose of each step? And ultimately, how does this all relate to the overall goal of metabolism to create ATP.